right, what did I say last time? Hello. <laughs> Hello, I'm Carol Freeman of Hypnotic Nutrition. I'm the creator of the 90 Day Ketogenic Diet Challenge program. And today I'm here with Spomenka Vitman. Um, welcome to Keto Chat. Uh, Thank you. Please. Me here. You're welcome. Um, so tell us, who are you? What do you do? Okay, so um, I'm many things. Um, I'm Eastern European. I'm from Belgrade, Serbia. Uh, I've been in this continent for 21 years, mm. living in Montreal and then uh, in the States for the past 11 years, 10 years in Seattle area. Um, I'm mom uh, and I'm also a psychotherapist. Oh, okay. And uh, I specialized in relationship therapy, trauma therapy, and cross cultural therapy. Oh. That sounds like a really unique combination that uh, um, it gives is. you a lot of, uh, you know, your life experience bringing into your work there. So, Pretty much. Um, so how, how did you get into this line of work? Have you always been doing this? or? Uh? Actually, no. Um, I studied Serbian language and literature a zillion years ago. Okay. Um, and uh, I work in that uh, area. Uh, but then I moved to Montreal 21 years ago, and then there was no actually job for that uh, field. Okay. Uh, and not I a lot of demand <laughs> in Canada for Serbian language. Okay. For uh, surprisingly no. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> yes. Um, so I I did uh, some credit analyst work and credit manager's work. And then um, also your favorite your favorite line of work was that no totally no. not <laughs> totally not it was survival but okay. you know like uh, I really didn't enjoy it and then you know like uh, we moved to the states and I decided to go back to school I always loved uh, psychology okay um, I was uh, quite a good listener. Mm. Um, I used to give a lot of advices, which I <laughs> learned it's not good. <laughs> uh, but you know, like this is this is a this is a line of work that I am very passionate about to help people to find their own ways. Okay. Uh, in leading balanced and fulfilling life. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. And I use like a, a different techniques to help my clients. Um, I use EMDR. Okay. Uh, DBT. I talk a lot uh, and I listen a lot. Okay. Um, mindfulness is uh, my favorite technique. Okay. Uh, to to teach and to help people balance their lives. Okay. So you mentioned EMDR, DBT, and mindfulness, and maybe people listening have no idea what those are. So we'll talk about those more, okay. um, so that people understand what that is and how that can help and. Mm -hmm. um, I just love your ap approach and these are perfect techniques that really help um, with things that a lot of my clients go through, uh, the mm -hmm. psychological side of mm -hmm. why they are eating what they eat, maybe mm -hmm. having challenges with emotional eating or stress eating or just overeating in general. Um, once we get their diet adjusted so that they're burning fat, mm -hmm. then um, we can work on the psychological side of it and give them the support that they need. So. Um, let's start with um, um, EMDR. What is that? Probably most people watching have never even heard of that. Uh, well, EMDR, it's eye movement, uh, desensitization, and reprocessing. Okay. Uh, what Sounds that fancy. Means, yeah. yeah, it is. It's very fancy and it's a long word. Okay. So what it means, actually, <clears throat> um, how, how it works, uh, it helps people process emotional state. Okay. Uh, that they had during trauma. Okay. During traumatic event. So to make it less fancy, uh, mm. when we go to sleep, at one point we are in the REM sleep, and our m eyes move rapidly. Okay. And that's how our brain process what happened during the day. All right. So, uh, for example, you get mad at your family member during the day over something and then you go to sleep your eyes are moving rapidly you wake up and then you say like what just happened you know like why was I so mad okay. this is not a good enough thing to be mad about so like people say <laughs> like let me sleep on it 
So you sleep exactly. on it, you feel better the next day, so your brain processed it and it's not as big of a deal the next day then. Absolutely. Yeah. However, uh, when trauma happened, mm. and trauma is actually our feeling that we will not survive what just happening. Okay, uh, so tra that's a definition <laughs> of trauma then, because there's some, um, sometimes mm -hmm. that word is thrown around, but in the psychological world, trauma is something that happens to us that per we perceive that our life is in danger. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that's true or not, that doesn't even matter. It's our perception no. of that. So, no. it's um, actually perception. It, it's, it's your feeling at a moment mm -hmm. that uh, a person will not uh, survive okay. the, the event or, or, or what, what's happening uh, to them or uh, what's happening to someone else and they, okay. they're observing, watching, yeah. experiencing. Mm, it doesn't mean, it's, it, as you said, it's real or not, but that's our perception. Okay. And that kind of feeling for, for one's own life or a life for another human being mm. um, uh, stays in our brain. Okay. And that feeling we cannot process during uh, sleeping time. So It was more than what our brain could handle then. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So it is not what actually happened, the okay. memory of the event. Okay. It's the emotional state that ah, we yeah. were in yeah. at the moment. Yeah. So <clears throat> talking about trauma usually doesn't have uh, a much result, but mm, doing okay. the MDR helps. So you're meeting by talking mm. about it, traditional talk therapy or yes. counseling, just talking about something that you know, left a traumatic imprint on your brain isn't enough to actually heal it or get over that reaction to it. Is that that what you're is correct? Yeah. Okay, that is correct. Yeah. So uh, helping people to move their eyes rapidly, okay, you know, actually helps. Okay. Process the emotional state, emotional distress. Okay. Sounds pretty powerful then. Actually, yeah. it's amazing. Ah. It's not about making people to forget. Okay. You you don't forget what happened to you, but there is no emotional charge ah. attached to that event, yeah. which helps us move on. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't affect our lives. So I'm curious then, what is it <clears throat> like, like um, for somebody who's going through EMDR um, therapies or treatment, is it, um, are they reliving that trauma? Are they feeling really emotionally upset as they're going through the therapy? Um, or is it a little more neutral, or what's it, what's it feel like for the person? So the feel for the person is usually um, like traveling, uh, being on a train, for okay. example, okay. And, and you're watching scenery okay. through the window of the train. Ah. Uh, you don't jump out of the train to join the scenery. Okay. Okay. So this is the same thing. You actually see things that happened. Okay in front of you, you know, but you are not joining it. So experience it in a way with an emotional detachment. Uh, in yeah. a sense, okay. and, and your brain process that in a safe environment. Okay. Uh, you're present here and now, which is a huge part yeah. of it. Yeah. So uh, the person is not anymore in the past. Okay. Person knows I'm here, I'm safe, and this is not what is happening today. Hmm. Sounds really great then. Um, it is actually yeah. amazing because uh, uh, people are not re-traumatized yeah, yeah. over and over right. again by, mm -hmm. by uh, telling the stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's very important. Well, and I, I, um, I know that that's a lot of people's fear. Uh, maybe they know they have something in the past that was very traumatic that sticks mm -hmm. with them. And I know a lot of people have fear of ever even going to talk to a counselor about that because it was so painful to go through it the first time, they can't even imagine mm -hmm. having to talk about it again. And so I can imagine for those people, this is an especially helpful and useful um, technique and tool to have is that they can be able to go through and resolve, uh, move past those mm -hmm. traumas, like you said, um, without actually having the fear of um, having to relive all that emotional trauma again and be re-traumatized. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. There is no emotional reliving, yeah. and that's the, that's the fact. Because mm -hmm. uh, when the when the eyes start moving, mm -hmm. 
uh, those movements connect to left and right brain. Okay. And the emotional disturbance diminishes. All right. With, which is the, the point of, of doing that. Yeah, yeah. And and there is no talking. Oh, okay. There, there is no talking. Okay, okay. You know, it, it's basically uh, people do not have to come and divulge or, or you know, like, say all their lives. Okay. Because there oh. is a lot of shame and guilt associated to trauma mm. many times. And people do have a hard time talking about certain yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there is a reason for it. Yeah. Because um, the, the whole uh, feeling brain is actually impacted. Okay. What do you what do you mean by that? The feeling brain impacted? <laughs> yeah, I call it feeling brain. It's not feeling brain, it's limbic. Um, however, uh, I, I I love to show okay. uh, uh, the brain and I love to talk about brain because okay. I believe that that education mm -hmm. is very important. How can you know what's going on with you unless you learn about the brain, about your emotions, uh, and why you behave the way you behave. So I love to show Dr. Siegel's uh, a hand model of the brain. Okay. okay, okay. Is that okay? Yes. Sure. Well, so is it okay go. with you? Uh. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's say, ooh, <laughs> let's say this is the brain. Okay. Okay. So this is the brain stem. Brain stem is responsible for basic needs, like breathing, peeing, pooping, being hungry, asleep, awake. Okay. This part, my, my thumb here, this part is our limbic. Limbic is security guard of our company, okay? Or <laughs> of, of our being. What does that mean? Here, we have stored all our emotions, our fears, our joys, our disgust, mm. our anger, mm. everything. So, this one is responsible for our survival. Okay. If we don't have that, we wouldn't survive. So, when security guard comes up, we don't think. We act mm. upon the emotion. Okay. So, when you're afraid... You act. You don't think how you're going to act. And this actually starts your central nervous system, which is sympathetic nervous system, fight, flight, or freeze. Okay. And parasympathetic nervous system, when you're calm, this is rest and digest. Okay. So whenever you're afraid, it goes boom, and it's fright, uh, flight, or freeze. Okay. okay. And you can't have both activated at the same time. You're either... Fight or flight or freeze or, or the digest and rest. Yeah, the yes. digest and rest. Yeah. Digest and rest. Yes. Okay. So fighting, flighting, or freezing mm -hmm. is something that you didn't choose. It's a part of your inborn instinct. Mm, okay. So you are either fighter or flighter or freezer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, and you probably guys know uh, uh, what type you are. Uh, so, but it's the same reaction. This part is frontal cortex here this is our thinking logical mm -hmm. mature problem solving brain this part here is prefrontal cortex okay prefrontal cortex is responsible for many things however uh, is also responsible for self awareness i know myself okay for empathy i know you mm -hmm. you know me so you are smiling i'm smiling you are sad <laughs> I'm sad mm. too. So this is how we mimic and we know each other. It's also responsible for social codes. Okay. When we go uh, uh, in the different places, we know basically how to behave. So we know on video that we shouldn't like... Be naked. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, no. We shouldn't make odd bodily noises no. or probably we shouldn't swear right now either. So. No. No. Okay. We know that. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and the same thing, you, you behave differently at work, home, okay. in a grocery store. Yeah. But you know, like, this is how you know your social codes. Okay. However, if you are triggered, mm. so let's say once upon a time you were six years old and then you fell down from your bike mm. 
And at that point, that was very scary for you, and you thought you will not survive. And then there was a gentleman who yelled at you on the top of it. Okay. Like, okay. What are you doing, child? Okay. Right? Yeah. That could be traumatic for six years old. Yeah. But over the time, uh, six years old forgot that. And today, six years old is 36 years old. Okay. At the workplace. Right? And something's going on, and someone is yelling. Mm. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. So what happens? This is actually a trigger. Yeah. And 36 years old just flips. Okay. And reacts the way 36 years old learned how to react when he's scared. Okay. Which is not with the social cues no or the thinking cues. or reasoning no. or empathy. No. That's all gone because that flipped open. Okay. Exactly. Okay. There is no that. It's that, just the pure reaction to to fear. Okay. So it could be like you are yelling, you punch the person, ah. you you start crying, okay. defensing yourself, or, or anything else for that matter. Okay. You know, like it, it's kind of interesting. Um, I hear a lot from my clients, you know, like, I never react, I never flip. I never flip in, in public or, or towards someone else. Okay. And they go like, oh, interesting. So you, you have no reactions to fear. No, 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 I do. You know, like when, when I'm afraid or, or I'm, I'm usually mad at myself. Mm. And then I yell at myself. I mm. criticize myself. Oh. I punch uh, myself or whatever, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I hear like, oh, no, no, I, 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 I'm not. I don't yell. I don't do anything. I eat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So triggering fear is always some kind of self-defensive mechanism. Mm -hmm. Some of us doing towards others, many of us mm -hmm. doing to ourselves. Okay. Yeah. Which is very, which is very interesting for for your uh, clients as well yeah. to realize. Yeah, well, and like you're explaining, it could be something that happened from your childhood that you don't even remember anymore. Oh, yeah. And all you know is that something happened and you're reacting and, you know, you're eating some food that that mm -hmm. you know is not helpful for you. And you might be thinking, like, why am I doing this? Why do I have no control? And that's a big part of this, the lid flipping, mm -hmm. is that because of the part of the brain that's in control at that time, you kind of don't really have any control at that moment. Um, that is correct. Yeah. So being you, you have a feeling, you perceive yeah. not having a control. Mm -hmm. And this is probably what you hear a lot from yeah. your clients, and I hear a lot from mine. And I, in, in personal life, you know, like, that was out of my control. Yeah. Yeah. In a matter of fact, everything is in our control. You know, like, we are humans, and we do react. Mm -hmm. We do react when we are scared. That's normal. But to, to recognize that you are afraid, mm -hmm. and there is a sign that you are afraid. Yeah. And this is what mindfulness and coping skills and mm -hmm. DBT helps. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, you know, processing those traumas that are triggering mm -hmm. you, and then learning new skills, which you mentioned then, DBT and mindfulness. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk about that now. So DBT, another um, acronym, stands for Dialectical Behavioral Therapy, which again, right. to most people, like, well, I don't even know what that means any more <laughs> than I know what DBT means. And so um, tell us kind of the four tenets of, uh, or four skill bases that TB DBT teaches. And mm -hmm. So DBT teaches like emotional regulation. This is your flipping lid. Mm. So instead of, you know, like uh, uh, perceiving uh, uh, fearful things that are not actually, you mm -hmm. know, you learn to identify, first of all, to identify your emotions. Okay. To, to know when you're afraid, when you're angry, when you disgust, when you're actually excited, and that you mm -hmm. can be all those things mm -hmm. in any given moment. Okay. You know, so it's identifying emotions and learning how to close your lid mm -hmm. with techniques so that you incorporate your prefrontal cortex and to, to solve problems instead of creating even more problems. Mm -hmm. So it's emotional yeah. regulation. The other thing is uh, learning about distress tolerance mm. because uh, life is not easy. 
Stuff happens, right? Stuff happens <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Like we 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 had an issue last time. Yes. Right? Yes. So we this is this is take two for us recording this. Exactly. We uh, we we spent an hour together. We had this fantastic, wonderful interview, and we get to the end and realize we had no audio and. Uh, there were feelings that came up for both of us. And, exactly. Uh, anger was one of them for me. Yes. Um, and we should talk about that. I'll make a, make a mental note. We want to talk about women and anger in a moment. But mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was it was we had to practice our distress tolerance skills Absolutely. at that moment because it was very distressing. Um, there were very strong feelings that came up. Mm -hmm. um, but that's an example that, for sure. That, that's, yeah. that's a perfect example, yeah, yeah. you know, because life happened, technology yeah. happened, <laughs> you know, like uh, other people happened yeah. in yeah. our lives yeah. that we have no control over. Car, car accidents happen. Yeah. Car accidents yeah. happen. Yeah. Uh, moving from one country to another happened. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, and, and this is all life. Mm -hmm. So we, we practice. Uh, distress tolerance skills, which means like, okay, I am frustrated. And the first thing is, you know, to recognize how you feel. Mm. So I'm frustrated. There is stress in this uh, situation. So what can I change? How can I change things? You know, so first is breathing to calm down your emotions mm -hmm. and then to analyze, can I change the situation? Mm -hmm. If I cannot change the situation, can take a different perspective mm -hmm. uh, or if if there is nothing to do with that you have to accept and mm -hmm. move on yeah yeah and that acceptance radical acceptance what we call in dbt yeah. um and it, it's scary when you say radical anything <laughs> uh, but in matter of fact this if you cannot change something you have no other yeah. option than accept yeah, yeah. however that doesn't mean that you approve. Yes. That you're okay with that. It doesn't mean you still don't have strong feelings or emotions about it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, distress tolerance. And then this, th there is an interpersonal effectiveness. Okay. Which is my favorite. Um, and uh, this is something how to learn to talk to other people. Mm. Uh, we, we tend to to feel that we are always right, mm. all of us. I, I, I do too, <laughs> I think I'm always right, and, and uh, there is no other opinion better than mine, <laughs> right? Um, however, we're all different. Mm. We all have different backgrounds, uh, and uh, we all have different experiences, different genders, uh, different everything. And uh, we bring that to communication. Mm. We bring our culture, mm -hmm. we bring, bring our gender, we bring uh, our background, our education, mm -hmm. our current living, and all of our experiences. And all of our past traumas. And yeah. that's yeah. our experience, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's our baggage. Mm -hmm. So whatever we say, it's only 7% oh. of words that we say. Mm. Everything else is body language and tone. Mm. So if I say like, I really like you, <laughs> you certainly wouldn't believe me. Right. But if I say like, you little monster, <laughs> it's, you, you certainly will know mm -hmm. that I don't think you're a monster. <laughs> right. So yeah. words don't mean much. Mm. Yeah. It's a lot about body language and the tone. Mm. But words do hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And the way we present sometimes does hurt. Mm. So interpersonal effectiveness teaches us how to use words so we don't hurt e uh, each other. Mm. I, I, love, I love that part. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I try with my clients uh, and I spend a lot of time on this particular uh, uh, subject. How to talk your partner, mm. how to talk to your kids, how mm. to talk to your parents, mm. how to talk to your, your co-workers, yeah, yeah. your employees, your bosses. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's crucial. Mm -hmm. It's crucial. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, um, I like to tell my clients that, you know, DBT teaches us the skills that most of us didn't learn in mm -hmm. childhood. And 
we all have emotions and feelings. It's part of being human. What, what most of us were never taught or understand is that we have feelings and emotions for a reason. Mm -hmm. And most of us were never taught, though, how to understand that or interpret that. And DBT teaches you all the skills to be able to um, mm -hmm. identify, have those feelings, um, know what, learn what they're, they're trying to tell you, whether it's a, a positive thing or you need something mm -hmm. else or your needs are being fulfilled. Um, DBT teaches you all of that, how to have your feelings and not need to do something to medicate those feelings. So Absolutely. most of the clients that I'm working with that share that they have emotional eating problems or mm -hmm. stress eating um, or just can't control like portion sizes and things like that, um, a lot of that is because they've learned that food will help them numb, avoid, or dissociate from their feelings. Mm -hmm. And those could be good feelings or bad feelings. Um, it's just that they never learned how to have them in the first place or learn what they were trying to teach or what their feelings were trying to tell them. Absolutely. And so using DBT is an excellent way to be able to understand those feelings and not need to turn to food as a way of numbing out those feelings. And so it, it takes work and practice, but it... It does. It does. And it, like, so, so the, the thing is, you know, like we all try to... Uh, um, stay away from feeling mm -hmm. because it, it's perceived as, as a weakness. Yeah. And it, it, it's actually um, sad because 90% of our decisions, mm. reactions, behavior is uh, led by feelings. Mm. And we have to know that. Yeah. Do you really want not to know, you know, like if your bus driver uh, is uh, a manic depressive or stable, mm. <laughs> you know, and then sit in that in, in, in that bus and, and be like totally okay. Mm. I exaggerate a little bit, mm. but you know, like it, it's kind of you have to know uh, those things that that drive you, mm. and mm. feelings do drive you. Yeah, yeah. Whether you acknowledge them or not, right? Yes. Yeah. And even worse if you don't acknowledge them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So acknowledging yeah. and learning how to recognize, and uh, you, you were absolutely right. No one taught us that. Yeah. No one taught us, like, okay, so you're acting out because you're angry. <laughs> Who said that to you? No one said that to me. Right, because instead we get the message as a child as to um, be quiet, calm down, or here, have a cookie. Uh, oh, this will yeah, make have you, a cookie. This will make mm -hmm. you feel better. I'm, you know, oh, you're crying. Here, have some food. Mm -hmm. um, that'll make you feel better. So, the, you know, our parents weren't trying to be, you know, they were well-intended. They, they didn't know any better themselves, and so they just learned what they learned to do. And so now as adults, we have the, the challenge then of unlearning those things that our well-meaning parents taught us, that mm -hmm. turn to food for comfort, to calm down, or to, uh, to not feel so upset. Mm -hmm. um, and DBT is great way to do that. Now, it before is. before we talk about mindfulness, which is also mm -hmm. part of DBT, um, let's go back and talk about this thing about anger because yeah, um, that's very interesting this, concept. Uh, we have an in interesting um, mm -hmm. difference in, in cultures that I think is important to talk about because in uh, for most women in the United States, we were taught that, you know, anger is the one emotion that we don't express. And uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the clients that I work with, when we start getting that point where they say, oh, you know, that think I was angry about that let's talk about that oh no mm -hmm. no no I can't I can't be angry that's it's really not only they can't mm -hmm. voice that but they you can see viscerally in their language that like oh wow no I can't be angry I wasn't angry um, so yeah you it's have it's a not... really interesting observation about the difference in, in, in cultures, cultures. and, mm -hmm. and uh, the whole society I, I think Western society you know uh, uh, and, and I would say, like, especially uh, um, American society mm -hmm. uh, puts some expectations on genders. Okay. So m my observation that is uh, uh, very based on, on, on the experience mm -hmm. uh, with uh, uh, different different people mm -hmm. uh, from different milieus, it, it's kind of, you know, like, so for, for women, it's uh, okay to be ecstatic. Mm. Um, happy uh, or totally depressed, sad, or hysterical. It's fine if a woman uh, in, in the restaurant makes a scene. That's okay. For men, that's not okay. You know, for men, uh, they cannot be overly happy, 
overly, especially not overly sad. Mm -hmm. They cannot mm -hmm. be sad mm -hmm. because that's weakness. Mm -hmm. That's prescribed for, for females, right? Um, they, they cannot be hysterical because this is, this is not okay. This is not manly. Mm -hmm. But they can be angry mm -hmm. and aggressive. Yeah, yeah. This is manly. And it's, it's utterly uh, uh, inappropriate. Because we all have the same, same emotions. Mm. We all have joy, we all have anger, we all have fear. Oh, for men, especially not being afraid. Mm -hmm. Fear is something that men do not have in this continent. I don't know how, okay? <laughs> because we, we are all afraid <laughs> all the time, mm. you know, for different reasons. Mm. But it's important to, and th that's why we do things like eating, mm. overeating. Mm -hmm harming ourselves, mm. over drinking, yeah. you know, like overworking, mm. shopping, over gambling, shopping, yeah. gambling, uh, over exercising, yeah. Yeah. a lot of over things so that we cover yeah. uncomfort of emotions. Those were the skills that we learned to be yes. able to manage our feelings when we didn't know any better. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no one taught us like, okay, you're acting out because you're angry. Mm. And that's why you are yelling at mommy. Yeah, yeah. So it's fine to be angry, but it's not okay to yell at me. Can you please not yell at me yeah. when you're angry? What can we do with your anger? So this is kind of a thing that we should teach our kids because they don't know what they feel. Yeah, because yeah. Because they don't know the name. They don't know the words. You have to put the name, the word, to the feeling. Okay. So that's great. I was going to ask you then. So people listening to this, they might be going, having a big light bulb moment, like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. that's why I use food and, you know, more than for hunger. Uh, uh, where do I even start? Mm -hmm. um, so what's, you know, what's a, a simple thing that people can do to get started in, on this road of, you know, having their emotions and... Well, so, so the best thing is uh, to observe uh, your reactions okay and to observe your to, to, to listen to your body to start to notice to start to notice okay. to acknowledge okay so uh, usually people know their behaviors okay and when they come to say like I eat I eat all the time and they go like okay fine and probably you say like mm -hmm. okay fine mm -hmm. so what happened before that yeah what what is it that you're thinking mm. about yourself mm. and usually they go like I think I cannot manage this, mm. or this is too difficult, and, or I'm not worthy, mm. or uh, I don't deserve anything better, you know, or I have no control. I have no control is, mm. a, is a fabulous one, mm. okay? So when you think I have no control, what do you feel? And, and usually it's like, I don't know. I don't feel anything. I don't have control. <laughs> uh, yes, you do feel. Mm. So when you tell yourself I have no control, if you don't know the name of the feeling, uh, observe your body. Mm. When you say, I don't have control, does it hit in your stomach? Does it hit in your chest? Does it in your head? Mm. Where do you feel I have no control? And then slowly go, is that anger? Mm. Is that fear? What is it that okay. you feel? So identifying, uh, uh, like say, saying about the behavior that you don't like. Okay. And go backwards. Okay. So uh, observe what happens in your body. Mm -hmm. Notice what happened before that. Mm -hmm. um, notice where in your body you're feeling something. And then see if you can put a name to that feeling. Name to that feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when you put a name to that feeling, for example, it's a fear, uh, you go further and say, like, so what happened that I'm afraid? Mm. Is someone yelling at me? Uh, is it uh, uh, a financial, like, oh, oh, I, I, I think, I believe I will not make it this mm. week or this month. Mm. Um, am I starting something new that always scares me? Uh, or, you know, like, I'm scared I, have, I will not have motivation to do, to finish mm -hmm. stuff. Mm. What is it that scared you? That's great. So, start. 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 <laughs> Just noticing. Yeah. Just noticing yeah. and acknowledge. Mm -hmm. So you know, like when you have uh, uh, intense feelings, um, you 
you can help yourself uh, lowering that, those feelings, mm. not feeling them that much. Okay. Just by saying out loud how you feel. Yeah, that's so true and it's so powerful mm -hmm. is that a lot of times the big thing our feeling wants to, us to know is it wants to be acknowledged and if we use food to cover up our feelings, that mm -hmm. feeling is still there and it often uh, festers and grows and becomes more intense. Ironically, Absolutely. we're trying to numb that feeling and it just becomes more intense. Mm -hmm. Whereas the simple act of just acknowledging, naming what you're feeling, mm -hmm. oftentimes is enough for that to subside. Absolutely, and, and for you who have kids, just teach them. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, like throwing your toys around, how about you say you are angry? Yeah. Or any other and feeling. And any other yeah. feeling. Yeah. You know, like you are excited. Yeah. That, that's beautiful. Yeah. That doesn't mean you, you start, you know, like writing on the walls or whatever <laughs> you do that you don't allow them mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. So it's like uh, t say out loud your feeling. Yeah. And don't be afraid of that. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to feel better. All right. That's, that's great. Hopefully the, you all appreciate that. So. Yeah. Um, so lastly, let's talk a little bit about mindfulness. So mm -hmm. um, this is a part of DBT, but it's also something all by itself. Mm -hmm. And um, I, uh, I, gonna tell tell you that I have a very strong belief. Um, I actually, in my old practice before mm -hmm. I became a ketogenic nutritionist myself, um, I used to teach a lot about mindful eating, um, and that's a way of, of eating in a very aware state um, with no judgment so um, that's not good or bad what you're eating or the mm -hmm. amount and then just full awareness of how the food um, was entering your body and the enjoyment of it and I used to teach that and I believed it was a way that could help people with <clears throat> weight loss or weight management mm -hmm. however in reality when you're eating the foods that cause your body to store more fat even if you're eating those in a mindful way what I discovered was you just mindfully, without judgment, <laughs> watch yourself gain weight. Um, so all by you. itself, mindfulness does not no. work for weight loss or even weight management. It works really well for weight gain, um, <clears throat> because I was very good at you know eating not whatever. Yourself. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. I was very good at eating any kind of dessert I wanted mm -hmm. with full enjoyment and no judgment, whether it was mm -hmm. good or bad. However, that kept my body in that fat storage mode, and it just continued. To cause me to gain weight. I have found now that when you get into a fat burning mode, which uh, ketosis is, um, you can you can eat mindfully then without judgment, um, and it has has a uh, it has benefits because it reduces mm -hmm. stress. Um, however, all by itself, um, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't work for weight loss. So um, that's my uh, my take on that. However. It has a lot of benefits for emotion regulation and, and um, also for weight loss. So, so the thing is, <clears throat> uh, we tend to take everything very religiously. You know, we we take everything so like it's mindfulness. Mindfulness mm -hmm. has a lot of you know marketing and uh, 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 take in, 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 in our uh, culture. It's like okay, so it's gonna fix everything. Mm -hmm. Nothing's gonna fix everything. Yeah. There is not one thing that you can use to fix everything in your life. It doesn't work. <laughs> what? Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, everything you do, you have to incorporate with your own knowledge mm. about what you want to do. So like you want to lose weight, inform yourself, you know, how to do that. What is the best diet that you can have? Mm. You know, what is the best solution for you? Talk to different people, to different professionals. Every tool in your life that you have helps you achieve the goals. Mm. So mindfulness is an awesome tool, but it's just a tool. Mm. It's not religion. It's a tool how to focus. Mm. It's a tool how to clear your mind. Mm. It's a tool how to help yourself being here and now. It's a tool how to appreciate yourself, mm -hmm. how to learn yourself, mm -hmm. how to learn others. So this is, this is the tool. It's not solution for 
your goal. Mm. It's a tool to get you from point A to point B. Speaking of that, mindfulness <laughs> is uh, the, the, best, the best explanation of mindfulness is being present in the moment, okay. uh, being focused on specific thing purposefully without judgment. So this is the hardest part. Mm -hmm. Once you start practicing, you realize that you judge everything. <laughs> everything in your life. And that's mm -hmm. normal. Yeah. That's normal. So the best way of practicing is to have beginner's mind. Okay. Beginner's mind is like having two years old mind. Because you have no experience. Mm. You have no, no knowledge about many things. So it's like observing, mm. describing, focusing with minimal use of adjectives. Okay. <laughs> so maybe with a gentle curiosity might be a way. I think of a mm -hmm. if I think of how a two year old looks at the world, like mm -hmm. everything's they're curious about everything. Exactly. They don't already know whether things are good or bad yet. They just are curious what it is. Curiosity and and it's also you know, like incorporating your senses, mm, mm -hmm. all of your senses. What I see, what I hear, you know, what I smell, mm. what I taste, mm. you know, what what I touch, and and finally, how do I feel about that? Mm. Do I feel okay or not? Yeah, and that is very important. And you know, like people believe that they have to have positive feelings all the time. Mm. I mean, so like, mindfulness is not about being happy all the time. It's not being, you know, like ecstatic all the time. <laughs> it, it's okay to be uh, content. It, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to say like, hmm, okay, um, this, is a, a, a not, this, is, this is a drink that is refreshing and it's cold uh, mm. and it's green and uh, I don't feel good about that. I don't like green tea. I don't feel good about that. <laughs> okay? And it's okay. And yeah, that's, that's yeah, fine. Yeah. It's fine. You don't have to love mm -hmm. it because you're mindful. Yeah. You, you, have, to, you have to be focused and, and learn what you love and what you don't love and be okay with it. Yeah. It's, learn, it, it's, it's actually, you know, like improving self-awareness. It's improving mm -hmm. empathy. Yeah. It's a improving your, your awareness of your surrounding, which is huge and important. Yeah. Well, because so many of, of my clients, my experience has been that um, they often aren't, they, they are so unhappy with their body that they want to mm -hmm. detach from their body. They don't want to, they mm -hmm. don't live in their body. They live in their head and they ignore their body. And so mindfulness helps you get back in touch with your body and be aware of mm -hmm. all of it. Um, the other thing I really like for eating habits is the part of it that's non-judgmental. So, so mm -hmm. many of us um, are taught or we have these black and white labels of these foods are bad and these foods are mm -hmm. good. And if I eat these foods, I'm bad. I'm a bad person. Mm -hmm. And if I eat these foods, then I'm a good person. And I'm going to tell you right now that what you eat has no reflection on your character as a human being. Absolutely not. You eat whatever food, um, and it doesn't make you a bad person at all. It just means you chose to eat that food. And so that's an example of switching from you know, judgment, which is I'm, I ate this bad food, I'm a bad person, that's judgment. Um, a non-judgmental view of that is I ate that food, and I, I chose to eat that food. And I so. am the person I am. It doesn't, it doesn't change who I am one bit because I ate that food. And, and this, is, this is the part of my, my uh, uh, theoretical orientation, mm. uh, which is actually an existential okay. uh, uh, theory, that uh, we as human beings, uh, we have freedom mm. to make choices and to decide, to make decisions. However, we have responsibility mm. to own these decisions. Yeah. And, and this is what it is all our life. You know, being like three months old, you choose if you're going to eat or not eat. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it sounds uh, 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 funny maybe and ridiculous to some people, but it is your choice. Hmm. 
it is your choice mm. and no one can make you mm -hmm. without hurting you of course <laughs> uh, but, but you know like th this is the thing own your choices and it doesn't mean that you're good or bad yeah, yeah. behavior yeah. is not make your personal characteristics yeah. it's your choices that you've learned and that yeah. you can unlearn yeah yeah yeah, and, and the, one of the reasons it's so powerful to let go of those judgments about mm -hmm. foods and your character when you eat those foods is that the pattern I see is that people, so remember I said that um, when you have feelings, you've learned to medicate those feelings or numb mm -hmm. those feelings by eating more food. And so when we label a food as bad, and I'm bad if I eat that food, so then mm -hmm. when you eat that food, you feel bad, you feel guilty, you feel mm -hmm. shameful. And then what's the learned behavior that you have to cope with those uncomfortable feelings? Eat it's even more. Eat more food. And so uh, by labeling food and yourself w for eating those foods, you perpetuate overeating and eating more. And it's just a snowball effect. And so Absolutely. by getting to the point that you can let go of that judgment and those labels, then you release yourself from that snowball effect. You release yourself from um, eating to cope with those feelings. And it's it's pretty powerful and it really can have a big impact on um, overeating and emotional eating for people so absolutely and yeah. I often hear you know like um, I'm mad at myself to make mistakes you know like hey mm -hmm. that and 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 that's why you know this this is the reason we all make mistakes yeah all the time every day I mean like I have no one hour in my life without making some kind of mistake <laughs> And, and that's normal. That's how we learn. Mm -hmm. That's how we learn. That's how we make uh, uh, life possible. Yeah. But, you know, like, uh, kind of uh, uh, discipline yourself and, and punishing yourself for making mistakes. Mm. It's, uh, it's very bad nurturing. Mm. It's very bad parent yeah. to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Mistakes are normal. Acknowledge them and say, okay, I ate this that doesn't suit me well. It doesn't do me well, but I enjoyed it yeah. and move on. Right. Don't go over and over. Yeah, exactly. But that's hard. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Well, thank you so much for being here today. This has been so much fun. I've loved having you on and um, I'm, I'm sure we'll have to have you back and because there's so much more that we could talk about. So. Um, down below, um, I'm going to have contact information if you'd like to work with Spomeka or Absolutely. have any other questions for her, as well as information on uh, my programs too. And so if you like this video, give us a thumbs up um, <laughs> or subscribe and uh, let us know in the comments what else you'd like us to talk about here on Keto Chat. So thanks for tuning in. This has been Carol Freeman of Hypnotic Nutrition. Thank you for having me yeah, here. You're welcome. Spomenka with Counseling. Thanks.